Uh, my name is Arne. Uh, this is Chris, and uh, we both work at Google. Uh, to tell us, uh, to talk a little bit more about who we are, uh, Chris is a developer advocate here, uh, and I'm a developer programs engineer. Uh, we've both worked on Friend Connect, and we've both created websites that have deep integrations into the Friend Connect system. Let's talk about who um, we're expecting uh, you guys are in the audience today. Uh, you're probably web developers. Uh, that much should be consistent. Uh, you probably have some experience working on server-side languages, too. So you probably work with Java, PHP, Ruby, and Python. Uh, you probably have uh, experience with SQL or uh, some sort of database systems. You probably have an existing website. Users probably go to your website to do some sort of task. Maybe they share information. Maybe they store information. Maybe they interact with other people. Uh, and you probably have an existing database of registered accounts. So people probably go to your website, fill out a form, give you some information, and then log in using uh, the credentials that they give you. And maybe you've heard about uh, Google Friend Connect, and you don't really uh, see how it integrates into your site. And so that's what we're here to tell you today. Maybe you've uh, gotten a few questions uh, about Friend Connect. Maybe you want to know, does it let users sign into my existing registration system? Uh, what users can sign in uh, if I put Friend Connect on my website? Uh, can I deliver a social experience for all of my users uh, it, through Friend Connect? And does Friend Connect enable me to send invitations out to other social networks so I can spread my site and grow adoption? And, sorry, uh, obviously the answer to this is, is yes, it, it, it does all of these things. Um, Friend Connect is what I like to consider a meta social network. That means it basically takes a lot of social networks and uh, mostly open social uh, networks and uh, reads and writes to them. Uh, it can also read from portable contact sites and basically aggregates all this data together into uh, its own social network. And on this platform, it actually exposes a set of APIs, uh, both client-side and server-side, that let you integrate deeply with your website. Um, also, Friend Connect has no icon, so uh, that makes it really difficult to have a visual uh, indicator for it, so I just used the blue box with the GFC, just so you're aware. Um, maybe you haven't actually seen Friend Connect in action, so I'm gonna do a really quick cut and paste integration with Friend Connect on a, an example hypothetical website. Uh, just to get it out of the way so that we can move on and see what we can do beyond that. Uh, the site in question, uh, I like to call plane crazy. Maybe it's you know, a, a site for people who really like uh, flying small aircraft. And so it's kind of like a database, uh, has a few planes in it, information, statistics. And you can see it's a fairly simple UI. It has the list of planes, it has a few links on the right, it has a Google search box, etc. So now, uh, how would we go about integrating this with Google Friend Connect? And so, uh, first of all, you go to the sign-up site, and then you click a link, and you fill out some information about your website. Give it the URL and the name. Then you have two files, and you're gonna download those two files to your server, and uh, basically, these two files enable Friend Connect to, basic, to work uh, anywhere in your site. So what I'm doing right now is just uploading them via FTP. Now we're gonna install the members gadget. The members gadget actually shows a list of people who are on your site and gives you some Chrome to log in and out. So what I'm doing is actually uh, downloading my CSS file from my site just so I can take a look at the colors that I'm using in the template. And I'm just cutting and pasting a few of the uh, select colors so that I can customize this members gadget. And see? Oh, I was just gonna say, this is the, the beyond, the part, the cut and paste, and so just to kind of set it up, and then after we do this, we're gonna get into the beyond section where we actually do more interesting server-side integration. Right, um, so we have the, uh, so I'm just going through and customizing some of these gadgets just to get bare social functionality into my site. You can see here I'm actually typing in uh, a few divs and stuff into my layout. Uh, I'll actually put in a little hello box, so when I go back to the site, and refresh, you can actually see there's a new little sidebar, and that's where I'm gonna put the members gadget. I go back in, I, I paste in the code that uh, Friend Connect gave me, I click back to the site, and I reload, and all of a sudden now I have a member site, members gadget. People can actually click into my site and then sign in. And look, I'm signing in with my Google credentials, I didn't have to put any of this login registration code, and I'm clicking a button, and now I'm a member of this site. Fairly straightforward. Uh, now it would be nice, uh, most sites have something in the top right-hand corner, 
kind of like a log in, log out set of bar links. So I'm gonna go back to the Frank Connect site and I'm gonna reconfigure yet another uh, piece of cut and paste functionality. So here I am just changing the color of the links to match my site. I'm changing the background color to match the uh, little bar that I wanna put in there. And I'm also uh, removing the border so that the, it blends seamlessly into my site. Again, I get some code generated. And I'm gonna go type it into the, the div on my site. Just put in a little bit of Chrome, you know, a shadow, make it look nice. And then uh, when I reload, you'll actually see a sign in, sign out bar, my, my icon, my name, et cetera, is in there. It looks pretty good. Uh, one more thing I'd really like to put into this, into this is uh, you're looking at a detail page of a plane, and I'd like users to comment, you know, kind of say things about the plane, uh, say why they like it. So I'm gonna put in what's called a comment gadget, and I'm just configuring it here again, doing the same thing that I've done before with the colors. And uh, you can actually see the, the gadget updating as it would normally, just like the other gadgets did. And then I'm gonna take that and let people actually come to my site, log in with Friend Connect, and then leave a comment about a certain plane. And the great part about this is that the integration is very direct. I mean, this movie is a little bit sped up. It's about 50% sped up, but uh, it's three minutes, 39 seconds long, so theoretically you should be able to get a Friend Connect site up and running in under eight minutes if you know what you're doing. Might take you a little bit longer, that's fine. Uh, finally, uh, you can see the comments gadget is in there. I'm just gonna leave a comment about the plane. Say, this is really a great plane. You can see comment uploads and refreshes, etc. So this is the, the cut and paste. Uh, we're gonna show you how you can actually take these ideas and take these gadgets and then uh, integrate it in a way that's more meaningful and deeper into your site. So, you're not using JavaScript anymore, you're actually using your own scripting languages, your own data store, et cetera, to float this social information back to the front end of your site. Uh, before we actually get to that though, let's talk a little bit about why you would wanna use Friend Connect as opposed to using any other system for, for doing this. Uh, first off, if you're a website owner, you're probably a social developer anyway. Uh, websites are social apps because people come to them, they interact, uh, the things that they do on the site usually are surfaced in the UI and then people will actually see what other users of the site have done. Uh, you can actually pull data from web services, you can mash stuff up. It's very much like a social application that you'd run on Facebook uh, and, or an, an open social container and vice versa too. Uh, because you're a social you know, website, you're probably built on a bunch of platforms. Uh, platforms are kind of like the APIs of the web uh, there's a lot of them, uh, especially if you're dealing with open social containers. If you wanna pull, let users uh, from open social come into your site, uh, you're gonna have to deal with several social networks. Uh, there's, uh, how many now? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a number, opensocial.org, you can see all the open social ones at least. <laughs> right, so uh, the users can come from any point of integration with your API, so if you have uh, an integration with Flickr, there's a chance that Flickr users will come to your site just because of that integration means that your website is kind of uh, dependent on existing platforms and there's so, there's so many of them. So you have to be cross-platform. Uh, like Open Social, uh, here's actually a list of some of the partners. Uh, when Open Social was, was brought out, it, it kind of gave an API for uh, simplifying social application development. So when you're building a website that needs to interface with a social network, now your choices are very large. Uh, it can be almost too large because there's a fixed cost for uh, uh, integrating with the social network. For example, you have to deploy your app. You usually have to sign up for a key or registration. You have to do per-platform support, so some platforms actually make you have a user forum just to, so you can support your app there, et cetera. Um, so when you're thinking about a traditional cross-platform model, like you compile uh, one application and then you install it on a bunch of different platforms, it doesn't really work that way anymore. It's not like what containers am I installed on. It's more like, who do I talk to? Where are the network bits kind of going and, and where are they coming from? And then when you're thinking about it in that model, why not think about it in terms of what am I actually doing with each network? So for example, you might be sharing activities uh, with uh, three different networks and you might be sharing profile data with two networks and your application might actually have views embedded on other networks. So uh, the great thing about this and what Friend Connect offers you is that it gives you one set of common APIs to kind of do all of this. 
Uh, it sits in front of activities so that when you're posting activities, you post it to one place. Uh, those activities go out to all the different sites that are configured with Friend Connect. In fact, it's pretty transparent. Um, or uh, actually, it's not transparent. It's pretty opaque to you uh, because you just make the one call and then Friend Connect does all the heavy lifting of uh, figuring out which networks to post to, et cetera. Uh, also, Friend Connect gives you a few other things. It gives you uh, some additional information uh, that you can surface in your website, uh, some extra tools and stuff to make yourself, uh, make your site more social. Uh, we'll definitely cover that. And um, it gives you some views. So if you're actually writing views of your application that run inside of social networks, for example, if you have a website but you also have a gadget that runs inside of Orkut or MySpace, uh, you can actually surface your gadget into Friend Connect I itself also. We actually had another talk yesterday about this, uh, and you should definitely check it out once the slides are posted online about writing gadgets for Google Friend Connect. Let's talk about why you would want to put Friend Connect on your server, though. Well, uh, basically, uh, it gives you a certain uh, very strong advantages. It gives you Google Friend Connect users to log in for the first time as if they were already registered on your website. So when a Google Friend Connect user comes into your site, they don't have to fill out that form. They actually have a user account already on your backend system. You have user IDs. You have information about them. Uh, it also gives you social signals. So you can highlight appropriate content based off of what a user's been doing on your site and what their friends have been doing on your site. Finally, uh, or not finally, it, it uses content to make new social connections between the users of your site. So uh, around the context of the content on your site, for example, plain crazy, it's planes, uh, you might be able to meet and interact with people that you wouldn't w uh, normally. And that actually makes your website way more valuable for the users, and they'll keep coming back. Finally, it allows users to share their experience with experiences with the rest of the web. So the idea behind that is that if users are going to your site and doing something interesting there, that you can actually make, use Friend Connect to share your site with the rest of the web in a bunch of different ways. So when we look at this, uh, and thinking back to the way of how we're talking to platforms, uh, we can break down the integration with Friend Connect into three different ways, and that's how I'm going to be presenting today. Uh, we, we let Profile come into the website. Uh, at the website itself, we add social functionality. And then out of, uh, like, going out of your website, we have activities and invites. And then to simplify it one more time, uh, it's basically who can access your site without registering, what can a user do with their friends, and where can users share their actions with the rest of the web. So let's talk about the ins first. The goal here is to allow a Friend Connect user to log into your site as if they were a registered user. There's three things we're going to do. We're going to let them sign in, we're going to obtain their social data, and then we're going to store it. Uh, first of all, you do need a little bit of cut and paste code to do a deep integration. Basically, you need a button to allow the user to click, and then that will actually log them into Friend Connect, do all the UI work, and then you can start pulling their data from your server. Uh, thankfully, this is actually a very short piece of code. Uh, here it's listed in three, uh, I'm sorry, four lines. Um, certainly easy. And uh, Chris here is actually going to show uh, doing that demo with the Plain Crazy site. Okay. Thanks, Arne. And uh, so, yes, um, what I'm going to do is basically uh, show you an application that I've been working on just uh, fairly recently, and that it actually uses the same, uh, the technology that uh, we're, we're describing. So, in this sense, I'm showing you the, the, the login page. And then in this case, I can click on the sign in button, and that little bit of JavaScript pops open, and then I can actually log in uh, to this site using my uh, Google Friend Connect account, or basically any essentially account through Google Friend Connect. Okay? So in that case, it's, it's actually a fairly simple process. Um, I'll go ahead and log into the site really quickly. And so what it's doing is, like, essentially, if you look into the code, a, a certain token is, pa is passed to your browser as a cookie. And then on the server side, you can extract that cookie. And then from then on, you can start making requests to the server, to the Google Friend Connect server, using the standard um, uh, RESTful protocol. And uh, in my case, this is the Java application that I'm running on Google App Engine for Java. And I'm using the Eclipse plugin that you may have seen in the keynote yesterday. So once I obtain the, the authorization to connect to the Google Friend Connect server, I can start querying social data. And I can inject that into the UI. So I'll show you more about this application as we move on. But just wanted to kind of cover that really quickly. So like uh, Chris said, uh, we can actually pull data from a server-to-server -server API. And the way this is done is through the open social set of APIs. Uh, which gives you uh, two ways of pulling data, basically a REST request or an RPC request. 
uh, what a lot of users don't really realize is, uh, or what a lot of developers, I'm sorry, don't really realize is a lot of friend connect data is actually public. Uh, at least the data that users sign in with and, um, sorry, it defaults to, defaults to public data. Uh, so if you actually wanted to, to check out the, the public data for a site, we actually have a URL down here. And if you follow that with your browser right now, you'll see an XML feed of all the users who have joined the Chowdown sample site. And uh, looking at the, the structure of this URL, it's, it's very straightforward. It's basically, you have an endpoint for the API, you do slash people, and then you do slash owner slash self. The, the slash owner slash self is a way to fetch the site itself. So basically, when a friend connect site is uh, put into the context of open social, there's the idea of the viewer and the owner, and the site itself is the owner. So if you wanna find out the members of a site, you'll look for the owner's friends. If you wanna find out who's actually using the site currently, then you'd look for the viewer. Uh, this symbol uh, hopefully is familiar to some of you. It's uh, OAuth. Uh, so when you're actually making data requests and you need to establish a, uh, some sort of credentials in order to fetch private data or do activities, you actually get, your site gets issued a consumer key and a consumer secret. Uh, you'll see that in the Friend Connect uh, UI, so it's, it's right there. And then when you use an OAuth library, you can actually go fetch data as if you were the site itself. And this is really good for background processing because you can do it at any time, and you can do things like post activities, and you can read and write app data. And both of those are actually covered by the Open Social APIs as well. So say you want to find out who the current user of your website is. Uh, you actually have to find, you have to get uh, user context. So when the user logs in, like Chris said, they actually have a cookie that gets sent to your domain, and it's called FCAuth. FCAuth actually just has a security token inside of it, and you can pass that to an open social client library and make requests for data, do everything you would normally be able to do with an open social site. So fetch people, uh, fetch app data, update app data, post activities, et cetera. You can see that the FCAuth token is really just a hash of the user ID and the site ID. So it gives you a context of a user on a specific site. Now if you take URLs like slash API slash people slash me slash self, you can actually append that FCAuth token, that value to it, and then when you make that uh, REST request, you can actually get data and perform activities as if you were the user interacting on your site. So this is pretty powerful because it lets you do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. Uh, keep in mind though, the user uh, has full control over this, so they have to join your site, they have to actually configure their site to send activities, et cetera. So they do have control still. And uh, Chris is now going to show uh, getting the FC off token and making some requests. That's right, I get to be demo way again. <laughs> Which is good because um, we're actually going out to a live site and w the, the network was actually causing problems, but uh, fortunately a little broadband uh, card came in handy. So anyway, so basically you want me to show the FC auth token mm -hmm. and I can quickly sign out just to kind of uh, explain the process. Um, but as you log in, um, what I've done in my implementation, I've created a servlet that essentially processes the, uh, the login. And uh, as I switch over into my Eclipse environment here, I have uh, essentially the servlet right here, process JFC login. And all that does is that just goes and fetches the cookie off of the, uh, of the browser, and then once I've obtained that, I set that up as an, attrib uh, an attribute for my open social client library. And so what that does is that essentially makes it uh, available, so then when I make any future requests to this open social container, which is Google Friend Connect, I can very easily fetch all the data that Arne was just referring to. So that's all I do. Once I uh, obtain the cookie, I set some of these attributes onto the session, and then from then on, I can create pages, do whatever I want, access social data, get my friends' data, get thumbnail, URL, all that kind of stuff. It's all accessible in my Java web application. Okay. So I don't know if there's any other things I want to show, but basically, I'm just using a servlet, and then once I obtain my, my information, I just send it right off to the plain list. Now, I do have like a little bit of code here, um, like for example, this method, I'm just placing that onto the session, so that's my profile information, uh, and then from then on, I can, I can take care of it. 
Now, the other thing that, that is very important is like, if I'm a brand new user and I've just signed into this application, I actually go through and check to see if that brand new Friend Connect user exists or not. And if he doesn't, I go ahead and create a brand new one. So this actually gets to the really important point that with Google Friend Connect server-side integration, you can actually have an existing user registry as well as plug in Google Friend Connect. And so it kind of, you can have the best of both worlds. So if you recall the sign-in page that I had earlier, you can have both of them side by side and have them work in a somewhat equal experience. But when you log in through the, the traditional registry, you just won't have access to the social features. But if you come in through Friend Connect, because you have access now and you've, you've declared that I am a, a Friend Connect user, you are setting that token, then you can actually inject a whole bunch of really cool features into your uh, web application, uh, social features that is. Okay, we'll switch back. Cool. So now that you're getting data, uh, how do you store it? And basically, uh, what I'll cover is what kind of data you'll be able to obtain using the FC, uh, using the Friend Connect APIs, and then I'll give you some advice about how you should structure your data store. Uh, to do this, we have to talk about the different types of users who might be accessing your site. So like Chris said, you can have locally registered users. Uh, these are the people that filled out your registration form and have native accounts on your system. Uh, they might also have additional data, such as site-specific profile data. For example, what's my favorite airplane yeah, in terms of the plane crazy site? Uh, they probably don't have friend data. Friend data or friend models are usually difficult to implement, so your site probably doesn't have one. Uh, Google Friend Connect users, uh, they live in the cloud. Basically, uh, they're the aggregate set of users from all the different social networks that Friend Connect supports, and they just basically come down in a consistent format through the API. You get a common set of profile fields, so you get a thumbnail URL, you get a profile URL, you get a, a little about me a snippet, just a small piece of text, and you get some custom URLs that the user has defined. So for example, maybe their blogger URL. Uh, another important point about this is that they bring their friends with them. So the idea is, if a friend connect is on a site, they have very uh, easy access to invite their friends, and you know, word of mouth and everything is is good. So having friend connect users come into your site uh, will actually help, hopefully, uh, adoption. Uh, the interesting thing to note about this, though, is that you can't store this data forever. Uh, when a user lives in the cloud, they might change their profile information, they might change their URLs, et cetera, uh, when they're not logged into your website, so you're not aware of these changes. Basically, the smallest piece of information that you can consistently store about a Friend Connect user is just their ID number. But that's not so bad, because you have access to this information whenever you want, so you can keep fetching it from the REST APIs. And you can obviously do a little bit of caching and everything to, to speed up your website, but, uh, keep in mind that you only really have this one number. So when you're talking about, or thinking about structuring your database, you probably have a table like this. And on it is uh, one set of constantly incrementing IDs, you know, that's your user ID number. Uh, after that is uh, a Google Friend Connect ID. So we just added an extra column into this hypothetical example, and we're storing that Google Friend Connect user ID. That, time, that way we can look up a user by either their local ID or the Google Friend Connect ID, and pick the appropriate user record uh, according to that. Finally, we have a little bit of site-specific data. So we have a username. Uh, that's the username that someone registered with. So you can see that there's actually a null entry in the second, uh, in the second row. I'm sorry that the slide's not very uh, bolded here. But uh, if someone comes to your site and registers, uh, they'll get a user ID. But if a Google Friend Connect user comes in, they might not have one because they never actually went through that registration flow. And then finally, you see a little bit of uh, that site-specific data, like I, like I mentioned. Here is the person's favorite airplane. So um, to show you how we kind of build a My Favorite Airplane uh, functionality into Plane Crazy, uh, Chris is going to do another demo. Okay. Thanks, Simon. So as, as we were discussing what would be the best way to, to kind of showcase this idea, um, the, the notion of, like, hey, let's go ahead and select a favorite item here. And so in this case, uh, if you notice the image there, there's a little check box. And what that means is that this, for this particular user, the Cessna 172 SP happens to be my favorite airplane. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and change it. I'm gonna click on the 152, actually. Um, any pilots out there in the audience? Uh, awesome, oh, cool, cool. I'll have to chat. Um, so anyway, what I've done here is I've created essentially a, um, it's, it's 
It's a facsimile of what Arnett showed earlier with the Friend Connect gadget, but I've kind of reprogrammed it, and now I have access to the, the server side. Uh, so in this case, when I click on this button, select this plane as your favorite, what it's doing, it's, it's first updating a, uh, a column in my table for my user, and I just define what my favorite plane is. Plus, I do some UI stuff just to uh, indicate that now the, uh, the plane is my favorite. But on the server side, I do something else. I also uh, post an activity. So I have like a, a special activity log locally, but then I also go out and use the Friend Connect API to post the activity to essentially any connected network that I specify for my account. So that so that's a really cool concept because I can then you know essentially tell the world that I've selected this airplane. And because Friend Connect uses the open social standards for essentially connecting to other servers, I can go on to these other servers and see what's available. Let me show you a little bit of the code. Uh, just so you get a, a basic idea. Uh, so in this case, I just have like a, a, a simple servlet that processes the form information. Um, and as it goes through, I have a, uh, a bit of code that sets the favorite item. item. So in this case, I'm just using the uh, Java app engine, but this could be you know, any server-side technology to store essentially what the particular item that I've selected as my favorite, and that stores it in my local registry. And then I have this little call here, post GFC activity. And all that does is that sets up my call out to open social, and I call create activity off of essentially uh, um, the client object, which is made available through the open social Java client library. And once I fire that off, that actually gets, um, uh, what's the word, I keep thinking, uh, delegated, or essentially propagated out to other social networks. Uh, and I'll see also that if I click on my own profile here, I can see even in my own activities that I, I've actually launched out and, and declared the Cessna 152 as my favorite activity, as my favorite uh, item in this case. So it's a little bit of both. I'm, I'm doing local activity generation. I'm keeping a log of it. I can display the local uh, log right there, but I can also post it out to the world and tell the world how it works. Is that good? Uh, so now that we have uh, the idea of how we're structuring our data store, we have uh, the column of user IDs, we have the column of Google Friend Connect IDs, let's just run through a little flowchart of how do we pick the correct user. And the first thing that we do is upon a, a page load to our, our authorization page, uh, or our login page, or whatever, we check for the presence of this FC off cookie. Now if it's not there, uh, we basically look and see if login credentials are present. Did someone access this page with their you know, username and password from a form post? If they did, uh, then we select from users uh, where the username is whatever and match the password. Uh, if we actually get a user back from that way, then we have a local user. We can use this record, you know, key data off of it locally. Uh, if the user credentials are not present, then the user's not logged in. And then we just redirect them back to the login page, et cetera. Now the interesting thing happens is when we actually do have an FC auth cookie because what we do is just a rest fetch with that cookie and then find out who at me is. Then we select, if a record actually comes back down, down the wire, basically we look at the Google Friend Connect ID that comes back, and we look into our users table again to see whether th uh, there's a user with the uh, corresponding Google Friend Connect ID. If there is, then that person's already visited our site, they're probably already interacted somehow, and we have their record, we can log them in. But if they're not, like Chris said, the really interesting thing is, we just create a user. We just put in an extra record, we attach the Google Friend Connect ID into that, and then it's basically as if they had already registered. So they didn't actually have to fill out any sort of form. It, the process is the same as it, the login process is the same the first time as it is every time. So uh, to finish up the in section is, the goal was to allow a Friend Connect user to log into the site as if they were a registered user. Uh, hopefully we showed you that uh, we let users log in with the JavaScript button, fetch data via social REST calls to the open social compatible endpoint, uh, we adapted our data store to store uh, some ID uh, information about Google Friend Connect users, and we created an authorization flow that let us pick the uh, corresponding row out of our database. Finally, uh, we added, you can add a little bit of caching for performance. Now it's the middle. How do we make our site more social? And we have two goals here. Let's use social signals to highlight important content, so let users on your site discover content that they wouldn't normally uh, discover and then we use content to make new social connections. So let people make new friends on your site in the context of the data. 
we're gonna do two simple steps. Uh, add Social Chrome to our site, and then we're gonna restructure our views to take advantage of extra data. Social Chrome is actually a very simple integration. Uh, for example, uh, FriendConnect has the idea that users have their own profile. So by adding this canvas.html file, one of the two files we downloaded when we set up the site, you can actually uh, render a user's profile for any user on your website, any Friend Connect user on your website. Uh, this is certainly customizable, so here's an example of two uh, profile pages for the same user on two different sites, and it's customized to the UI of the site itself. What uh, Chris was talking about, uh, we having the registration or login page, uh, promoting signing in with Google Friend Connect is pretty important. People Give people the alternative of filling out a registration form by, hey, just click this button. So that actually like, uh, kind of makes it stand out. It's a first class citizen on your website. Uh, we can restructure our UI a little bit to take advantage of social signals. So depending on whether the user's registered locally, uh, we'll just have a sign out button, uh, as you can see on the top left corner there. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in addition to that, uh, we also show a little bit of UI about, hey, we, we have this thing called Google Friend Connect. You can sign in with your friends. I'm sorry that this, site, this slide is uh, pretty small, but uh, basically it says, we have this ability for you to log in, get your friends attached to your profile, and click this button, and you can do that. So we actually still allow the option of signing with Friend Connect, even though they're signed in locally. Now, the, the next uh, example to the right of that is a registered user with a Google Friend Connect account. And again, they're logged in, they have an, a Google Friend Connect account, but for whatever reason, you don't have an FC Auth cookie. So we're actually showing an extra login link, and this, one, this time it's just another login link, and they can click that and actually just enable their, their account. And this lets uh, you fetch friends, do uh, social posts of activity and data, et cetera. So the, the prompt here is actually, hey, you're logged out of Friend Connect, just click this button, and you'll be logged in, and you'll have access to this extra functionality on our website. Finally, at the very bottom is a Google Friend Connect user. Uh, we've just added a few extra links, and these are links that are provided by the Friend Connect APIs, uh, but we don't really prompt them because now we have access to do anything we want with this kind of user. Uh, so uh, talking about structuring these buttons and logins, uh, you really wanna give incentives for logging in. So, so you can, next to a piece of content on your website, you should give prompts like, share this with your friends, log in with Google Friend Connect or see what your friends are doing, et cetera. And uh, what's good about the sharing is when you integrate it into your backend, it's actually uh, visible to all users on your site too. So when you're, when you're actually floating data on your, on your views, you will actually show you how uh, even users who are not Friend Connect enabled can actually see that there's interactions taking place on your website and that might incentivize them to log in. And logging in, like we talked about, is pretty good because it'll help them bring their friends into your site as well. So for example, here's a simple social view, uh, basically uh, showing what users are on the site. Uh, it's it's a, one of the easiest views to implement. Basically, you, you scroll over the recent updates uh, on the list, and for example, here on Plain Crazy, we're showing the recent favorites of someone on the site. So when someone goes through and favorites something on the site, here's a hypothetical view of uh, basically, you know, here's the last 10 updates, and. It, it's, it's pretty interesting, it, it's not that interesting, but it does benefit social users and friend connect users, uh, I'm sorry, friend connect users and registered users the same. Uh, in taking this in the context of different sites, maybe you wanna float top scores, highest rated players, recent updates, et cetera. Now, uh, another interesting uh, uh, view that you can surface on your website uh, and this is mostly to benefit Friend Connect users, is show them what, what their friends have been doing on the website. So for example, uh, here's a hypothetical view of the Plain Crazy site where it shows what your friends have favorited. So here, Lane, Steph, and Dan like the Cirrus SR22, uh, and Ryan and Patrick like the Piper Warrior. So now I can see, oh, these, uh, these friends of mine have different tastes, but I, I kind of get some interesting uh, signals to drive me to the, these two planes. Uh, again, taking this in the context of maybe a different type of site, you can do things like, uh, are my friends playing any sort of game? Uh, how do I rank compared to my friends, et cetera? I'm sure your imagination can come up with some alternatives. So um, you wanna show building my friend's favorite airplane? Oh, yeah, my friend. mm -hmm. yeah. So in this case, um, implementing like you know friend stuff is simply uh, a query in this case because I have all the data stored locally. Uh, so if I want to say, what are my friend's favorite planes? I'll just show you really quickly. Um, 
I'm just driving a query. It pulls it out, pulls it out of the da data store, and essentially these are my friends' favorite coins. Uh, and so in this case, our nascent plane is Cessna 172 SB. How does it work? Let me just show you very quickly. And this is just a quick uh, JSP example. Um, I do have probably a little bit more logic inside the JSP than I'm comfortable with, uh, but it's mainly for demo purposes. But in this case, all I'm doing is I'm making a, a call out to the, uh, uh, the data store, in this case, uh, Java App Engine, and just pulling, pulling back essentially a list of, well, first I fetch my friends, so I know what list of my friends are, and then from that friend uh, list, I then go through and compare um, you know, which friends actually have the same uh, favorite airplane. So, and that's all I do, then I render it out to the page there. I can fire off other queries as well, so friends, favorite planes in general. So that, that just goes back to my user registry, my, such a my, my table of uh, different users, and just displays what specifically is their, their, uh, their favorite airplane, okay? I think I clicked on that twice. Anyway, basically it's, it, all I'm doing is just firing off different queries and pulling it directly uh, from my local in, uh, data store, um, and I'm comparing that with the, uh, the same information that I'm getting. Oh, in this case, I, we probably need to put some more friends on there, but anyway, you, you get the idea. Okay, cool. Switching back here, uh, let's talk about some more advanced or intermediate uh, types of views. Uh, keep in mind that uh, data in the context of the site is actually really valuable. So when you're showing a list of planes, showing which friends uh, like that plane next to that is, is a pretty nice piece of functionality, and it kind of helps uh, users who are browsing around your site to, to actually see pieces of content that might be more interesting than other pieces. So, for example, uh, on the Plane Crazy site, there's a Cessna 172, and it shows, hey, three of my friends like this plane. Well, I'm going to be more inclined to click in and find out more about it. Why do they like it so much? Obviously, you can think about how this applies to other sites, too. So, uh, if you have a guitar site, then maybe some of your friends r really like playing this guitar or own this guitar. Uh, if you're doing a restaurant review site, then some of your friends gave this restaurant a poor review. So the signals actually uh, help users decide what content's important and what content isn't important. To take that one step further, we actually can make social data available that's not part of your friend circle. So when you're actually looking at a plane, if you were to see, hey, look, there's five people that I don't know who actually really like this plane, uh, and you actually get the context of a discussion going on about why they like this plane, all of a sudden your site becomes way more valuable. Uh, if you actually know that you can go to your site to talk with people about planes and find out, hey, is this a good plane? Do I want to try to fly this or, or whatever? Uh, then, uh, then the experience becomes much more valuable in the sense that people can only do that on your site. Your site becomes the destination for plane data. And the good thing about this is because of Friend Connect's friending model, you can actually find out people who have similar tastes and interests on your site and befriend them. You can actually make new friends and contact, uh, contacts through the website. So do you want to show? I think I already showed it, uh, this next thing, but um, I, if there's anything else you want to cover on that. Um, basically, uh, I think I already showed the advanced social views where yeah. users who are already favored this favored plane. Favored this uh, But basically, um, and like I said, the implementation was, was quite easy once I have the data stored locally. It was just a matter of fetching my friends. Oh, I need to add, actually have some more data in there. But basically, you get the idea. I'm, I'm just fetching from a local table and, and, and uh, pulling out and rendering the data. So it's simple, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so to summarize, basically what we did was we used social signals uh, to direct users to appropriate content. Again, we showed uh, you know, socially what content might be interesting. And then finally, we allowed content to dictate relationships on our site, uh, something that Friend Connect's really great at. Uh, to do this, we made social users first class citizens. We gave them their own UI. We gave them login buttons that were on the same level as normal login buttons. Uh, and we also changed their data views. So we actually showed data that uh, displayed activities of people working on your site, that uh, we put friend data into content, and then we allowed a discussion to happen around the content to allow users to interact with each other. The final part of the presentation is the outs, right? How do we get data out of our site? And the goal here is to let users share their experiences on your site with the rest of the web. There's two major, uh, act, uh, two major areas here where we can actually improve the site. One is invites, and the other is activity streams. 
So invites is uh, actually part of the, the Friend Connect UI that's built in. It's very easy to do. You basically just render one single link and a pop-up will come in and let you uh, let a currently logged in user invite their friends to come join the site. You can actually see that they have a kind of sharing tab, which lets you share the site data with uh, some of the most popular social websites. Uh, listed up here is MySpace, Twitter, Delicious, Dig. Uh, basically, if people have an interesting time on your site, they're gonna wanna talk about it. And Friend Connect gives you a really simple way to, to actually post data back out to all of these sites. In fact, it's one line of code. The deeper integration, though, is activity streams. So basically, most social networks have the idea of a stream of updates that your users, uh, that its users have been doing, and when the user logs in, they get an updated view of what their friends have been doing. Uh, Friend Connect actually gives you access to write to some of these streams. So uh, what it does is sit between you having to make a call to each social network that your users are on, and you basically send an activity to one endpoint, and depending on the user's configuration, they can actually post activities out to several different sites. Uh, naturally, this depends on user permissions, though, because if they don't want activities going out, uh, it, they can turn that off. Now, the great thing about this is that social networks, uh, like you, even if you're writing to only a few uh, outputs, uh, the way the social web is kind of shaping up is, is that this activity stream kind of gets forwarded and redistributed around the web. Uh, one interesting thing is I, I kind of have my own social network profile set up in a way that um, I use a service called FriendFeed, and uh, when I do an update, it actually uh, aggregates all of these updates. And then I have certain social network profiles, like uh, my Facebook profile gets updated every time my FriendFeed uh, account updates. So even though I might share something on one site, uh, FriendFeed picks it up, then Facebook picks it up, and it's kind of like this circular dependency of activities that kind of just keeps multiplying, multiplying. So kind of feeding data into that system is really useful because it means there's a lot of eyeballs on the content that you're posting out there. And if people, if anyone kind of, if that content resonates with anyone and, and someone finds it interesting, they're gonna follow that link back to your site. And then they're gonna interact and then they're gonna bring their friends and it's kind of like a virtuous cycle where the outs actually feed data back into the ins of your website. And uh, it's a great way to drive adoption, I'd say. Uh, to show you how easy it is to post an activity, here is a, a simple REST call. Um, I have to use curl because we have to do a post, so you can't really just access it directly in your browser. But you can actually see, um, following the open social API model, it's slash activities, slash me, slash self. You put in the FC auth token, and then you basically just post a JSON kind of uh, JSON object into the activity API. Uh, you can see it here, it's encoded, so I can just use it from a text uh, input. Uh, but you gave it a, I gave it a title, I gave it a body, and then ran the curl command. Uh, curl posted it, and then that's it. That's all I have to worry about. Uh, you can see that these kinds of activities show up in Friend Connect uh, enabled websites as well. So this is a view in the context of a site itself. It shows what all the users on that site have been doing. So this is uh, one of those gadgets that you can uh, install quickly onto your website. You can also provide a deeply integrated view you know, by making a REST call to fetch the activities for your site. Uh, one great thing about it is if you have kind of like some of the easier Friend Connect pieces, uh, a lot of these activities surface automatically. For example, they're visible in the members gadget. Uh, the interesting, even more interesting thing about this is that activity updates are viewable across every single Google Friend Connect site. So basically, when you post an activity, someone on a completely different site um, might see it. So considering that there are millions of Google Friend Connect sites, that gives you a lot of exposure through this method as well. Do you want to show a writing activity? Sure, sure. Cool. So one of the things that I did do, I went back and then I did a quick browse of the airplanes. Um, and then I, I noticed that by looking at all my friends' favorite planes, I, I was then able to select the Cessna 172 as my favorite plane right there. So then now when I do essentially a query on the friends' favorite plane is in the LC, the, that there are at least three of my friends that, that also have the same favorite friend. So just to kind of finish that one off, or, or at least uh, you and a, and a cute teddy bear oh, <laughs> seem to like my, uh, my uh, same uh, plane selection. Now getting back to the activities, so if I go back and, you know, as, as I kind of did a quick demo earlier, but I can uh, drill down a little bit more. Um, so say if I want to go back to the Cessna 152. Um, so as I showed you this before, basically, 
I implemented this so it does two things. It actually stores like a local copy of this, you know, plane is my favorite. I have like actually essentially this, uh, a column in my table that says it's my favorite plane. And I'm also um, keeping that handy so then I can, I can render it down here. So now we have a log of like different people that are favoring this particular airplane. And so this log is based on each different plane. And so the cool thing about the activities, and I'll just show you the code once I fire it off, is um, it, it's actually quite simple. And I think, I think it's, I covered it mostly, but basically it's just a matter of, uh, in my case, since I'm using Java, I'm just using the open social Java client library, and I set up uh, my call, and it's called client create activity. And that's all I really need to do at that point. The, the, the activity itself uh, gets sent off. And, and I have a little bit of logic here that, you know, if, if you didn't enter a comment, it will just have a, 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 a customi customized comment for you, or you can actually type into the field and it will send it there. Uh, but other than that, it's actually very straightforward. And the cool thing is that now, because my, well, my particular user ID, I've maxed out my quota for sending out um, activities, but if you do the same thing, you can actually go out to Plaxo or NetLog and, and find uh, this same application instance, this activity, is also being uh, sent out to these other um, partner websites as well. And so that's a really, I love that feature of Friend, Friend Connect. It's a, a great way to have viral spread of your application. And your application doesn't even have to be like, in a typical open social container. In this case, it's an actual website. So, anyway, great. Mm -hmm. So, to recap, uh, we wanted to let users share their experiences on the site with the rest of the web. And we did that two ways. We gave them invite functionality through the Friend Connect pop up, uh, where they could just post uh, information back to other websites. And then we used activity streams to kind of drive data deeply into other social networks. So, in conclusion, uh, we had a few goals, uh, which we accomplished by e integrating deeply with Friend Connect. It wasn't very difficult. Um, basically, we wanted to allow Friend Connect users to log in. We did that through JavaScript, uh, through a JavaScript button, which uh, gave the UI flow for a user logging in, established a cookie on our site, where we were able to pull uh, social data and then establish a data store model uh, around that social data. We used social signals to highlight content, so we put in social Chrome, kind of uh, floated uh, friend data into the UI of our site, and we also uh, put in data about social users around the content of the site as well. And finally, we used invites and activities to uh, let people share. Yeah, and, and just to like add on to that, um, you can go to code.google.com slash APIs slash Friend Connect, and you can see all of the documentation for how to interact with Google Friend Connect via uh, server-side APIs. And, and the, the thing that Arne didn't show was the original application that he built called Shoutout. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a real uh, cool application. You can check out the source code. It's actually hosted on Google Projects mm -hmm. and play with it. It's actually written in Python. Uh, my goal was kind of provide like a, a complementary application in Java. So depending on what, what uh, you know, what's your, your language of choice, you can now get a kind of a, a nice example for interacting with Google Friend Connect in either Python or in Java. So since my sample's new, I don't quite have it hosted out on Google Code Projects, but uh, once the conference is over, I'll, I'll, I'll get it uh, hosted out there so you guys can play with the code as well. Great, uh, I think we're gonna do a little bit of QA. Uh, before we do that, uh, I'd just like to say if uh, you have questions, just come up and uh, ask them. I guess there's a mic there. Mic there. There's a mic and there, too. Yeah. Um, if you want, we can check moderator. We can uh, go to uh, this URL, bit.ly, uh, bit.ly, slash beyond cut paste dash questions. Uh, we'll see if there's any questions there. And uh, as a reminder, uh, don't forget to provide feedback on this presentation by going to uh, www.haveasec.com slash io. Um, there's a URL right there. Uh, we take feedback from, from this session, and we'll make the conference better next year. Thanks for attending. Thank you. We have a question over there on the left side. There. Is there a uh, Ruby API available? I'm sorry, what? A Ruby API, a gem or a plugin? Oh, you mean for, for connecting to open social containers? Yeah. yeah. Actually, the Google, if you Google open social client libraries, you'll see essentially the Java, PHP, Ruby, and... Um, Am I forgetting one? Uh, Java, PHP, uh, uh, Ruby, and, Ruby Python. and Python. Yes, cool. Sorry. One follow-up question. Can you customize a social Chrome, like for the, the case you showed where there was a, a partial login where someone was connected to Friend Connect but they weren't connected to the site? Yeah. Can you customize that messaging? Is that, or is that something oh, No, 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 that, that was all completely okay. done by me. So okay. I just decided to, to, you know, try to encourage people to log in, but you don't have to do that, certainly. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah. 
Um, which type of Google accounts do you support? As in, do you support Google Apps accounts? Do you support Google accounts without Gmail? Do you support, how do you handle it if the user has multiple accounts? I mean, they have multiple cookies in that case. Uh, it's, it, it's definitely any Google account, so you don't need to have Gmail. Uh, I don't know about apps. I wonder, um, no? Okay, no, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, we also, uh, on, like one of the biggest benefits of this is that it supports open ID. So anyone with an open ID login uh, can log in with Google Friend Connect. Yeah. Yahoo as well? Yeah, yeah, well, which is based on open yeah, ID. Yeah, same thing, yeah. Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, do you guys have any restriction if I want to store like a user's friends list? Uh, is mm -hmm. it like, can I only store it like 24 hours? Um, um, is, is Musi here actually? Uh, or is Sammy? I don't right there. I'll repeat it. So, real quick? Yeah, yeah, sorry, to summarize the answer just so it gets picked up. Um, I, th I think it was that the number is 24 hours. To, yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, so the reason being uh, the, the data is dynamic, so you don't want to cache it for that long anyway, um, but 24 hours. Uh, and each site has their own terms of service, what yeah. you can do with that social data. So. But from a technical standpoint, yeah, you can make fetches for your friends. I think you were waiting, yeah. Two quick questions. Uh, first is, are we allowed to pull in activities, not just push? And yeah. the second question is, who is, what are the social networks that have, uh, that are supporting Friend Connect? Sure, um, uh, yeah, you can pull in activities. Uh, you, you won't get, you, you'll get the Friend Connect activities. So you won't get the, you know, if a user's logged in on MySpace or something, you won't be able to pull their MySpace activities, but you'll get the activities that were generated with the Friend Connect API. But if the users in Facebook pushing activities into Friend Connect, I'll be able to push, to pull them in to my application. Yeah, if you use anything to push activities into Friend Connect, yeah. then yeah, you'll be able to get it back out again. Um, as for what, which networks, uh, which networks are supported just in general by Friend Connect? Okay, yeah. um, off the top of my head, uh, what is it now? We, we just added a whole bunch. We had, uh, or not a whole bunch, but we just, you mean the one, you're talking about friend source, essentially at the server side level, as opposed to what sites actually run with Friend Connect. As we mentioned before, there's millions, <laughs> uh, but as yeah. far as like server side, you know, we have like the, the well, we just added NetLog, you know, oh, recently. That's, that's so, yeah. so the networks you support are Plaxo, Orchid, um, and what else? Uh, Net NetLog, Twitter, um, Google accounts. And Google, yeah. right, right. All right, thank cool. you. And OpenID logins, too. Can my users be selective about which of those networks they push their activities to or stream their activities from? Yes, absolutely. What's um, the user experience look like? Uh, the user experience is actually uh, like in the configuration. When a user um, logs into Friend Connect, they have a settings control panel. Um, I don't know if you want to try to load that up. In time. Oh, I was also looking on the moderate page well, as I'm well, but it, it's, it's pretty easy. You actually that. have the experience of the, the network that you sign in with, with Friend Connect, uh, becomes your kind of active network, and you can add networks onto that. So by adding and removing networks, you can determine which networks get updates. There's actually a little bar across the bottom of this panel that, that lets you check and uncheck them. It's a checkbox, and yeah. you, say, it, you tell it whether you want to propagate your, your activities out to your connected networks. And that's specific to my website? Yeah. Uh, it's to your friend, okay, friend, to, to your friend Connect account. Yeah. No, it's, it's, well, no, it's specific it? to your Friend Connect website. Oh, so, I'm sorry. So, so you can, you, the, the active linking in social networks is a global operation but the ability to turn it on and off per site is, is, yeah. is, is the user model to where you can decide, I want to publish activities to uh, Orchid from one site but not another user. Yeah. Thank and, you. and you'll actually see in the activity the name of the application that it posted your activity. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I don't see any moderator questions. Um, so unless... Okay, we'll oh, question on the left here. Yeah. 
One question, will, will Friend Connect work with a site hosted on Ning? With a site hosted on Ning? Um, Do you have to install the... For example, like a, a Ning social network? Exactly. Um, so does Ning let you do backend customization? I know you used to be able to. Not that's what I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, we need I, to get those files onto the server. I don't believe that's possible. I think what Ning has been doing is they started um, allowing customizations through uh, gadgets, through mm -hmm. open social. And so what, what's certainly possible is you can take Friend Connect gadgets and, and put them into Ning, or, but you, you, don't, you can't really do the, the deep integration with Ning because right. you don't have control over the server. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank yeah. you. Should be possible if you can get those two files onto your Ning, mm -hmm. onto the Ning site. So if you can upload those two files, in theory, it should just work, and you can just embed yeah. it. Yeah, that's paste not the, the deep JavaScript. integration. That, that's like the the high level kind of yeah. iframe based uh, consumer integration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if I put Friend Connect on my site, do I have any way of getting a hold of the users out of band? Like, do I get the user's email address, or if I want to authenticate the user or send messages to the user without having them go through Friend Connect later? Um, okay. Also, if I decide that Friend Connect's not quite for my site, do I have a way to get those users back or export them out of Friend Connect if I want to? Yeah, why don't you code <laughs> the mic? Yeah, so we must hear them. <laughs> microphone, microphone on the right side. Can you turn on the microphone on the right side to make sure it's on? You think it's on? Yeah, oh, there we go. Better. Better. So Thanks. because you can blend uh, the Friend Connect data with data that you collect on your site. You could, for example, have designed that login process that they just showed you so that it um, requested an email address of the user. So that way, you're in possession of the email address for a given user ID, and it's complemented by the Friend Connect so that at any point in time, you could have an exit strategy where you carry what you've learned about the user off. And but I'd have to ask the user to give me their email That's address. right. And then um, we have other work that's coming down the pike that will make it more more of just a permission-based thing. And we haven't uh, shipped that yet, but it's a very straightforward request that a lot of people have had. So we'll be doing that pretty soon. Okay. Cool. Um, we have less than a minute, so I'll take one more question. I think you, you Related to the same context of email ID, is there a way Instead of using the standard templates where like you invite, like is there a custom way for me to even pull the email address and create my own ways to do it? Because I noticed that a lot of open social containers today don't explicitly share email information. Yeah. Um, so you, you can't get that information directly from the API, but what you can do is in that step where you implicitly create a user, uh, the first time they access your site, you can just ask them for their email. Say, hey, if you want an update from the site, if you want me to, to contact you, then you can, you can do that. Um, but there isn't like a direct connection through Friend Connect where I can seamlessly get the information so okay. I don't get the user to re-register really. No, no, okay. it, it, you, you won't be able to get email directly. Okay. Uh, uh, great, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I gotta run to uh, Open Social in, in the Enterprise, so if you wanna join us over there as well.